Good afternoon, my YouTube viewers. Crystal here. I'm here this afternoon because I have actually modified the original program that I made this morning. So the original program that I made this morning, it was two people playing. Well, I modified that and I made it to where one person is playing against the computer. So that would be good because if you're only one person, then you can play the game against the computer. And so in this video, we're using the same while statement that we previously had, the same if statement that we previously had, but we're introducing a random int. So we're introducing a new element into this program, which is good if you want to get involved in programming. So what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and go through the code on this program and see, see how it goes. So I, I wrote the program in Google Colab, which is a free online Jupyter notebook. Uh, it's got Python installed on it, and it's got the, several libraries already installed on it. But what I will say is Google Colab does not install the most current versions of the libraries. So sometimes you may have to install those yourself if it's not doing what you want it to do. So if you're doing something really new, then it's always a good idea to check which version of a particular library is on Google Colab, just in case you have to um, install the upgrade. And so that's the first thing we did. And then whenever I finished the program, I saved it onto my personal GitHub account. So this is on my GitHub account. And I will be making a blog post on this uh, program. And when I make the blog post, I will give you a link to the GitHub account. So if you want to look at the code, then you'll need to read the blog post, and that's when you'll get the link to the code. So we saved it on GitHub. It's on my GitHub repository. And uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll, I'll read you the challenge, but I modified it because now instead of, your, instead of having two players, you're going to have one player against the computer. So it's still two players, just one player in the computer. So the challenge is there are two players. Each player writes a number hidden from the other player. It can be any integer, one or greater. The players reveal their numbers. Whoever chose the lower number gets one point. Unless the lower number is lower by only one, then the player with the higher number gets two points. If they both chose the same number, neither player gets a point. This repeats and the game ends when one player has five points. The challenge is to write a script to play the game knowing the rules and all your opponent's previous numbers so you can program a strategy and no return random int 1-3 one comma three is not a strategy. You should really try playing this first with your friends. You'll see there's a deep human element to predicting your opponent's choice. Is it possible to program a strong strategy? Well, I don't have any friends, so I just went ahead and wrote the program and I played it myself. So I have my boyfriend, but um, I might get him to test it. He can test it if he wants. So after I wrote this program in Google Colab, the first thing I had to do was import the libraries. And so in this instance, I imported pandas, numpy, and random. Because we introduced a new element into this program, because what we're going to have is we're going to have a person playing the computer and the computer is going to be random. So I've assigned the variables, player one equals zero, player two equals zero, 
score one equals zero, score two equals zero. So play one, player one is the human being and player two is the computer. And now what we do is we have a while loop. So while score is less than five, score one is less than five and score two is less than five, player one equals input, enter player one's number. Player two is your random number. Player one is becomes an integer, and player two becomes an integer as well. And the reason why is because when you input uh, data from the keyboard, it's a string. So you're going to have to convert it to an integer. So, and then what we do is we say we print player one's number and we print player two's number. So if player one is less than player two minus one, score one equals score one plus one. If player one equals player two minus one, score two equals score two plus two. If player one is less than player one minus one, score two equals score two plus one. If player two equals player one minus one, score one equals score one plus two. Print you score one is, and then you print score one, print score two is, and then you print score two, and print stop game. And then now we have an, another if statement. We have an if else statement. If score one is greater than score two, print congratulations, player one, you're the winter. If else, print congratulations, player two, you are the winner. So I played the game. You can see how I played the game just to test it, make sure it worked. And at the end of the game, uh, it said, congratulations, player two, you are the winner. So the computer was the winner. So what you could do is you could play it loads of times and keep a record of how many times the computer was the winner. And then you can determine who was the better player, the computer or the human. That might be something that I could do to update this game, something I could think about to sort of like keep a track of how many times player one wins and how many times player two wins. And then so if player two is always winning, then that means player two is the better player. And this would also be a very good example uh, to keep to create a list of how many how, how many times who won did the win was the winner uh, player one or was the winner player two and then you could actually put that into a data frame so that could be something else that I could do to make this program better make it more sophisticated and to actually create an array of the winners. So, so if, if one is the winner, then it's one. And if two is the winner, then it's two. And make a list of that. So that would be really fabulous. I thought about that. That's another good thing about me doing code reviews. Because whenever I do a code review, I can always pick out a mistake or I can think about things that I would like to do. And so code reviews do come in handy. You know, sometimes you think, oh, I won't do a code review, but they do come in handy because I get other ideas to where I can build onto the software packages. So that concludes this code review. I will actually be making a blog post on this code review. And um, so if you want the code, then you will need to read the blog post when I make it. 
So thank you so much for watching this video. If you like my videos, please like, subscribe, and share. If you uh, want to be notified whenever I make a video, please tick the bell button next to the subscribe button. And every time I make a video, you will be notified of that. And if you like the work I do and you want to support me, I've got my email address to my PayPal account in the description box down below. And the reason why is because I don't have enough subscribers to monetize, so I have to ask for donations. So again, thank you so much for watching this video. I look forward to making new videos for you in the future.